Welcome back to Tech on Tap. My name is Adam Herman with DataBank's technical team. Today we're going to be focusing in on solution architecting, really looking at the engagement before we start, bringing in a subject matter expert that can help understand the solution and the technologies that are offered to you to come up with the best solution possible for the problems you're having. Next up, it's time to meet our guests. Hi, I'm Scott Overby. I'm a solution architect here at DataBank. I've been working in industry for about 22 years now. Um, as a solution architect, I work closely with our customers to define projects, to find the right ways to implement them, um, and get them into delivery of successful implementations. All right, and I'm Jim Err, formerly a solutions architect here at DataBank, and worked with Scott in the past. He actually taught me a lot about the solution architect position and really what was necessary to get in there and build, design, and help our, our professional services team to deliver. All right, let's take a look at today's beer. So today's beer was actually brought here from Scott. Uh, it's from Fair State Brewing Co Company. They're out of Minneapolis where Scott's from. So thank you for bringing that, Scott. The beer today is actually called The Key to Happiness. This is just like having Scott on any of your projects. <laughs> so uh, let's let's get into it and see what we got. So Scott, uh, from the Minneapolis area, where do you actually live up there? Uh, I live on the very southern part of Minneapolis in Lakeville. Okay. Uh, you go any further into to the country, well, where we are now. <laughs> well, we're out there a bit now, but Again, for those that didn't see our last episode or other episode with Jim, um, that was a great board, Jim. Sorry, sorry about that. Jim is not from Minnesota, so this will probably be his first time having a fair state beer. It is. This is going to be the first time, so let's see. I might need a straw to get to the beer, but that's okay. Yeah, I know. I, I'm hoping I get a redemption on mine. I'm sorry right. about that. So today's beer is actually a German-style Dunkel. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. Probably the only German beer we'll have on Tech on Tap. Uh, but again, thanks, Scott. Let's... Let's see what we think about it here, guys. It's pretty good. Pretty good. A little tastes, dry. Tastes darker than it looks. Let's we'll try that one more time. Uh, again, we're going to try to rate each beer on a scale from one to five. Um, I'm going to start with you guys first and see what you think. Right. I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's a good hearty beer mm -hmm. and it's very flavorful. Uh, a little bit on the dry side, so if you like a dry beer, this will definitely do it for you. Um, I'm thinking it's a four. Four out of five. Four out of five? Four out of five. Yeah, I'd say it, I was probably going to give it a three, but I really enjoyed the orange can, so I'm going to up that to a four. Um, it, it does have a lot of flavor. Uh, it's a little bit of a darker beer. I don't really like the lighter beers, but uh, it's very good. It, yeah. it is, and I'm going to try one more time here. Uh, I'm gonna say it almost tastes like a Kolsch when I'm drinking it. It's mm. it's pretty light beer. It's good. Mm. You know, I'm gonna actually go half ratings because I think a lot of the beers that we're gonna be having are pretty good. And I'll, I'm gonna probably give it about a three and a half on my scale. Okay. So just you know, about a four out of any five. orange can. Uh, the orange can, you know, isn't really gonna do it for me. Okay. I'm really looking for a beer that I'm gonna want to drink here. Okay. So you know, it's cold blood, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Scott. <laughs> Our focus today is on pre-solution architecting before we get into a project and why it's important. To really understand what we need to be doing with our customers, to understand what, what we have for options when we're out there. Uh, Scott, jumping into your role a little bit, because we are talking about pre-planning and solution architecting. You know, what is your day-to-day -day look like when you're working with a customer? What value do you bring? And how do you help them come to you know, resolution of what offerings they have. Yeah, I think, you know, the interesting way to look at it is I sometimes describe myself as a translator um, when people ask what I do, because I'm really, really trying to take the language of the end user, what they're looking for, um, combine that with the language of IT and technical people, what they need to deliver, and then combine that from a third language of project management and account management side to deliver these. Um, on a daily basis, what it really means is getting in and, and talking to the end users, figuring out what they need and being able to translate that out into a scope to define what that project is. Bringing in my experience, right, of what I've worked on previously, what projects I've worked, what hasn't worked, 
um, and, and knowing how to craft that to get to a, a good end. Yeah. Jim, you know, he used to be a solution architect too, obviously trained up by Scott, mm -hmm. uh, but taking that into the project side too, tell me a little bit about, you know, how you see the engagements. Well, when I, when I was an SA, I mean, you really had to look at all components because a lot of times a customer comes directly to you with a laser focus, right? This is what we want to do. They don't think about the spider web that surrounds that one objective. So when you start to think about, you know, all the other components, like Scott said, that's where the solution architect who's done this and seen this and has worked on these projects with other customers comes into play and say, did you think about this? Did you think about that? And start to pull those all into one link. Um, so when we get what the solution architect does on the delivery side, what comes into play is the level of effort they put in and more so like the vision and the scope of what the customer need is and then translating that back to our teams, right? So when we, when we do that handoff, we sit down with the solution architect, we go through the process and then we go in and we do maybe some additional discovery. The other components that were thought about, but not 100% discovered. That's where our discovery comes into play. But meanwhile, the focus is really what the solutions architect has brought to the customer and brought to the team. Once the, once the customer says, this is what we want, this is what we need. So, I mean, without a solution architect up front, it's like trying to build a house without a blueprint. And it's like you start measuring, things aren't going to measure up right. You're going to end up with holes in the floor where you don't need a hole or no roof on top. So it's it's a big package, right? It's a bundle. And how you put that bundle together really starts out with the foundation. Yeah. So I did hear a lot about translation, kind mm -hmm. of leads me into education and planning. So coming in, it sounds like the solution architecting role is really focusing in on getting everyone prepped for a delivery of a solution, making sure they know what to pick. Um, you know, right now I know when I've, I've been involved with assays, they've really helped pick the right solution that can scale so that you don't have to pivot. Right. Um, you know, really looking at that value of that solution architect, it's knowing what's that. It, it's it's the guide. So being able to see into the future somewhat, right? So we, we need a psychic with us somewhere. Yeah, okay. so. it, it's, it's really about having the foresight. It is it's like, what's next? Because once something hits the ground and it's successful, because you've planned for it appropriately, the next ask comes, the next add-in comes. And if you don't plan for that, that's where, you know, now all of a sudden you're going back to the drawing board. So after we started to understand a little bit about what solution architecture is, maybe talk, talk to me a little bit how we start to do that with our customers. Um, you know, a lot of customers try to do things on their own, mm -hmm. you know, and if they want to, how can we help guide them through that? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I follow a pretty set pattern. There are different parts and pieces I use for every project, but, you know, I'm always starting off with, you know, trying to meet with the, the user community itself and hear their story. Almost always we're coming from an existing process. So tell me what that is, right? And as I start to hear that story, you know, there's a lot of, of back and forth that'll happen in that conversation where I'm introducing ideas of what we can do um, with that, how we can improve upon that, how we can replicate those things. Um, and as we go forward, I think it's really important that I have to I have to be able to prove out to everybody involved that that understanding exists. So whether that's through a proof of concept demonstration, documentation of that process, right, and whatever that is, and being able to review it with all the necessary parties to say, yeah, we we have an appropriate scope. You know, it's gone through my filter as a solution architect, making sure it's it's a project that can work mm -hmm. and has worked or similar has worked in the past. But um, you know, making sure that we've got that scope and, and what this project needs to accomplish is doing. So did I hear that right? You're leveraging the customer teams to be the subject matter expert yeah. in their business. And you're bringing in industry industry knowledge that you've seen and lessons learned from other projects and yeah. architecting to help them. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's a short way of saying to it, but in a short amount of time, proving to them that, you know, there's an understanding of what they need and being able to show that back to them in some sense. Yeah. Scott, you know, what's the number one issue you've seen with projects or getting into a solution or those that, you know, they want a solution, they don't know what it is. How do you, how do you lead them to the solution? I don't know that this is 100% an answer to your question, but I think the biggest gap is the understanding of the difference between what I as a solution architect do, what I call a survey versus what discovery is. Um, and understanding those distinctions, staying high level is, is a way to describe it. And, and I'll use a very specific example. When, you, when you're talking about EDMM, EDMS solutions, 
um, you're looking at a set of document types, right? And in a discovery session, you have to know what those document types are named, how they're going to be used, where they're going to. At a solution architecting role, I need to know that there's 30 of them or 50 of them, right? I don't really care what they're named or, or the details at the end of it. I need to define that they need to exist. And so that gap in, in you know, kind of language and conversation of, of what we need to architect a solution versus what we need to discover um, is really kind of the biggest hurdle to get over at first, right, as, as we're having these conversations. Yeah. Whereas the discovery is more in depth. That's mm -hmm. where we're going to grab the nuts and bolts. The data feed that comes from this system, the integration with that system, how we can begin to take what's been built out of that basic framework, the thought of here's what we need to store our, our data, whether the file types an image, whether it's electronic file, whether it's textual, whatever that is, how is it going to get used downstream in business process? And then we really build it into that business process because I think as a whole, the industry has changed from you know, document ma imaging or document management to really process automation and bringing in those documents that would have otherwise come into a file cabinet. But now it's what's coming through the door and how can I get to the next step to, to accomplish my, my business goal. So, so really what I'm hearing is you're building confidence in a solution mm -hmm. for the executives so you can tee it up for approval to get moving into project mode right. where we'll come in and actually figure out the details. And that's one of the languages that needs to be spoken. Yeah. All right. So there you go. I try to simplify yeah. just a little bit for everyone here. But I, I've seen a lot of projects where we've come in and we had no idea what we we're going to do. It took a lot of questions to get there. It took surveys to get there. Mm -hmm. And it even takes, you know, additional solution architecting when you get into the actual project itself. Right. Not everyone you bring to the table knows everything. So, you know, it's, it's a continuous, continuous iteration, except for Scott. He knows <laughs> except for Scott. And I, I take that as a joke, but, but, you know, there's some meaning behind that. Like, you have to have a certain amount of experience to be able to get through those bottlenecks in the conversations, right? Uh, you're, you're possibly dealing with a user community that doesn't know what's possible, right? Or they've just done things a certain way. So being able to introduce new ideas, um, to be able to, to take what they're saying uh, and, and translate that into some meaningful, right? You need a certain amount of experience to do that well, I think. When we're we're running in through uh, current solutions that they have, current uh, products that they're using, software, what happens when you have limitations within that platform? I call up smarter people than myself and ask them to solve the problem. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think the way I answer this question is, it's kind of a joke, but there's truth to it. Like every problem solved. Right. I mean, we have custom development teams and then, you know, there's other ways to solve problems, maybe outside the, the core package you're looking at. Um, so the real question comes down to determining the value of that. Right. And determining the sustainability of those kind of solutions. So, you know, to use, again, a specific example, if you're looking at, at a certain software platform and you're asking it to do something that it can't do, you know, how much how much need is there? How much value is there in solving that problem? And how much does it, you, you know, can you fit within those parameters going to an outside solution or a custom developed add-on to that, right? Um, so it's not a question of if you can do something. The bigger question is, should you be doing something? There's a solution to everything, right? Yeah. It's how you get there. Do you have the knowledge to get there? And just really understanding what your problems are is going to be key. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, kind of summarizing where we been today here, you know, we, we talked about the value of what solution architecting is. We talked about what the role is with a title, with a person, or what you need to do pre-project for it to be successful. But it really is that pre-planning and understanding of the solution, of the data, of the problems. Uh, so I think, you know, Jim, I don't know if you have anything to close this out with here today, but... I, th I think it's really about, you know, the deliverable. At the end of the day, you look at a customer's current process and you start to clean that up. You really clean up what's being delivered to them. And I've done I've done this numerous times as a solutions engineer, as a solutions architect, but why do we need step number four in a process? Well, we've always done it that way. And no one can give you a logical reason because the person who designed that step has been retired for 10 years but we've never changed what we've done. We've always done it that way. So a lot of it is really change management, breaking the mold, and then building something that the users are really happy, right? Something that they're gonna adapt and it's gonna be a success for the organization. And that starts with the solutions architect. I like it. It should end there too, when we get into our lessons learned for everyone to know, you know, what we actually built and what you designed. Mm -hmm. 
Well, summary of our show today, we reviewed the Minneapolis, Minnesota Fair State Company, uh, the key to happiness, just like having Scott here with us today. We also talked about the value solution architecting, the pre-work that should be put in before you actually go into a project, understanding your technology, understanding the design and the business processes that go with it to have a successful implementation. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>